Can you hear me down there? A warm welcome to St. Lucie and a warm welcome to Neve and family. Um, we shall see more of Baba and the parents and all the unhangers later. So, a uh, warm welcome back for Hilton who is recovered from his uh, operation. And I must say he's in fine fettle. In fact, he's probably better after the absence. But no, no, I'm just kidding. But it's a very warm welcome to you. And it's been an eventful week for us in South Africa with the end of the elections. And I hope we all chose. But this morning, we choose the Lord. <coughs> who will you choose? The next few weeks, St. Luke's is going to be looking at worship and all the different aspects of worship. Why do we do that? Is it just the songs we sing? <laughs> What's this worship about? So, watch the space for, for the sermons in the next few weeks. But just to maybe introduce us, we're here to, to tell God who He is, who He is in our life, to open the gates, to ask for Him to come and follow us, and to use us for His service. So it's not just to follow us, it's to follow us so we can go out. So, a call to worship is now come to worship. So please stand. <laughs>
service. Join with me as we begin our introduction. Be with us, Spirit of God. Nothing, Nothing can separate us from your love. <clears throat> Breathe on us, breath of God. With us with your saving power. Speak in us, wisdom of God. Bring With strength, healing, and peace. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Please sit as we pray. And we say together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom most secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. And as we come to a time of penitence, let us hear what the Bible tells us. The Pharisees asked, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? Jesus replied, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but those who are ill. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy not to sacrifice. For I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Recognizing that we are not healthy, that we need mercy, and we are the sinners he came to call. In a moment of quiet reflection, we bring our brokenness and sin to God's throne of grace. And so we confess together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. May the Father forgive us by the death of his Son and strengthen us to live in the power of the Spirit all our days. Amen. Lord of all wisdom, you have so ordered our life that we walk by faith and not by sight. Grant that in the darkness of this world we may witness to our faith by the courage of our lives through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs> Before we come to the, the readings, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, this month our collection is going to go through to Hearts of Hope, which is a registered child and youth care centre, an NPO that's based in Wendywood. And we are blessed today to have some representatives of Hearts of Hope with us. And therefore, I'm going to invite them up. Debbie and Kathy, I think, are coming up. <laughs> Just Debbie, <laughs> in order to speak to us. About what you do. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for having us here today and for selecting Hearts of Hope to be your beneficiary for this month. It's uh, wonderful actually to be back. We were married at St. Luke's yesterday, uh, 33 <laughs> years ago. So it was wonderful to be uh, down the aisle as we did at the early service this morning and to see so many familiar faces who have certainly aged better than I have, I'm going to add. Um, so we have a, a strong attachment to St. Luke's as Hearts of Hope, an organization that focuses on the care of orphaned and vulnerable children. 
And we really began as an organization in 1997 when Margaret Payton, I'm sure many of you remember her, placed a, a tiny little message in the Pew Bulletin asking if there's anyone who would like to volunteer at Mother Teresa's home in observatory. And that's where we started. And from there have grown and grown to an organization that today we're based in Wendywood, just near Gallo Manor Sandton. And we have four properties, nine different houses, 52 children who stay with us at the children's home with amazing house moms who are employed to look after them and stay with the children. And all the children that are in our care are orphaned and vulnerable children. So they're placed with us by the children's court because they're in need of care and protection. And they stay with us either until they're 18 or 21. If we can't find them forever families to which they could be either reunited, fostered or adopted. So to date, we've had just over 288 children who've left us to find their new forever families. So really as an organization that focuses on child care working in the community, we are completely dependent on community support. So thank you so much for selecting us for this month and I can assure you your contributions will make an enormous difference to the children in our care. We will be outside afterwards if you want to take a brochure or if you want to find out anything more about us. But we really appreciate your support. Thank you so much. And yeah, thank you. Thank you. Lord, we thank you that your word gives life and changes us and renews us. And we pray, Lord, that you'd help us to open ourselves to the work that you have in mind for each of us and for us as a nation as we receive your word today. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So as we come to the reading of God's word, please would you stand if you're comfortable? If not, you're welcome to remain seated. A reading from 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 1 to 20. The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli, in those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. One night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. But Eli said, I did not call you. Go back and lie down. So he went and lay down. Again the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. My son, Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not been yet been revealed to him. A third time the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. Then Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, Go and lie down, and if he calls you, say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. The Lord came and stood there, calling as at the other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. And the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make the ears of everyone who hears about it tingle. At that time, I will carry out against Eli everything I spoke about his family from beginning to end. For I told him that I would judge his family forever because of the sin he knew about. His sons uttered blasphemies against God, and he failed to restrain them. Therefore, I swore to the house of Eli 
The guilt of Eli's house will never be atoned for by sacrifice or offering. Samuel lay down until the morning and then opened the doors of the house of the Lord. He was afraid to tell Eli the vision. But Eli called him and said, Samuel, my son. Samuel answered, here I am. What was it he said to you, Eli asked. Do not hide it from me. May God deal with you, be it ever so severely, if you hide from me anything he told you. So Samuel told him everything, hiding nothing from him. Then Eli said, He is the Lord. Let him do what is good in his eyes. The Lord was with Samuel as he grew up, and he let none of Samuel's words fall to the ground. And all Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, recognized that Samuel was attested as a prophet of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, you Lord, Lord, know it completely. You <coughs> hem me in, behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too, too lofty, lofty for me to attain. For you created my inmost being. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, God. How vast is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would not number the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. Glory to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and it will be forever. Amen. Listen to the good news proclaimed in Mark chapter 2, verse 23 to chapter 3, verse 6. Glory to Christ. One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the cornfields, and as his disciples walked along, they began to pick some ears of corn. The Pharisees said to him, Look, why are they doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath? He answered, Have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need. In the days of Abiathar, the high priest, he entered the house of God and ate the consecrated bread, which is lawful only for priests to eat. And he also gave some to his companions. Then he said to them, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even on the Sabbath. Another time, Jesus went into the synagogue and a man with a shriveled hand was there. Some of them were looking for a reason to accuse Jesus, so they watched him closely to see if he would heal him on the Sabbath. Jesus said to the man with the shriveled hand, stand up in front of everyone. Then Jesus asked them, which is lawful on the Sabbath, to do good or to do evil, to save life or to kill? But they remained silent. He looked around at them in anger and deeply distressed at their stubborn hearts, said to the man, stretch out your hand, he stretched it out, and his hand was completely restored. Then the Pharisees went out and began to plot with the Herodians how they might kill Jesus. This is the gospel of Christ. Would you bow your heads as you stand? Lord, you have given us your light to shine in the darkness, to shine in our hearts, we pray. Amen. Thank you. Please sit down. We begin.
begin a new era in South Africa. We have had the elections and we prayed and were um, holding the, the process in prayer, holding ourselves in prayer, um, holding the country and the leaders in prayer, and now we've got past the voting, we've got past the counting, and now we begin the negotiation and the argy-bargy of trying to form a coalition. The ANC has got, according to the last figures I saw, uh, not sufficient to form a deal with one or two tiny parties to boost them over the 50% level. They'll have to have a, a coalition with one of the bigger parties to get them to the 50% level. And now the question is, who will it be? And how will that work? And how will that play out down the line? But even before then, we have the problem that I heard this morning that our esteemed former president, Jacob Zuma, has said they can't release the results officially because he's contesting them, because he is convinced that MK must have got at least 60% of the vote nationally. And if they release the, the, the results as they currently stand, he says there will be violence, which is a little worrying. The other worrying thing, if you look at the results, and you look at the map of the distribution of the results, that KwaZulu-Natal is almost entirely MK and the IFP. And you see an emergence of a tribalist um, political identity. And if you look around our continent, tribalism has never served any country at all well. So our praying continues. We are now into an uncharted territory, uncertainty. What is going to happen? That we don't know. And we have to keep praying. We mustn't think that because we've done the voting, the praying's over. I believe that now that the voting's over, now we have to start praying because now the change comes. And it's not only nationally that the change comes. It's, it's, it's in all sorts of areas. We see... Uh, the mainline church is struggling, and they have to change. Now, parish, we've seen a, 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 an ordered life for the last 40, 50 years, but as our environment changes, as the circumstances around us change, as people move and new people come in, we have to be changing as well. And in our individual lives, we face change day after day, and the Ballarums bringing Neve for a, their uh, baptism are starting a new phase as well, a new change in life. And we see that in the reading from Samuel. We have uh, the country, the, the people of Israel had come out of Egypt, they'd gone through the wilderness, entered the promised land, eventually settled down, and then things had gone... Um, uh, pear-shaped, and people turned away from God, they were oppressed, they turned back to God, God sent a, a judge or a leader to rescue them, and he did, and they turned back to God, and they, they waited, and a short while later, they started worshipping other gods, and it was this constant toing and froing of their faithfulness, and it ends, as you read through the book of Judges, with the, the, the comment, Every person did as they wanted to because there was no king. You have a sense of the, the center un, coming undone. And we see that in the book of Samuel, it starts off, and you, if, as you read it, and you read what Eli and his sons were doing. Eli was the high priest, and his sons were priests in the tabernacle. They were supposed to be leading the people, and his sons were completely venal and self-centered. They were using their position for their own advantage, and they turned completely away from God in all that they were doing. And they were the leaders of Israel. The old order was corrupt. 
and God needed to do something different. And then we have, are introduced to Samuel, born miraculously as a child, as an answer to prayer, brought to God to serve him. And as we read verse 1, we're told that the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. The people were not hearing God. They couldn't see where they should be going. But Samuel was also there. In verse 2, he told Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak they could barely see, was lying in his usual place. And I was wondering as I read it through, thinking, I wonder to what extent Eli represents the people of Israel that they had lost their sight. Years back they could see. They had reached the point where they could no longer see. And they were just in their place. In verse 3, we're told the lamp of God had not yet gone out. Which could just be, a, a, in terms of the story, a sort of giving the time. They lit the lamps in the tabernacle, which were to burn through the night. And as the sun came up, they could be extinguished. And so this was saying, just essentially saying it wasn't yet dawn. It was in the early hours of the morning. But at the same time as I read that, I thought, here was Israel. And there was still a flicker of light. The lamp had not yet gone out in Israel. There was still some light and some hope for them. And in that situation, we're told Samuel was lying in the house of the Lord where the ark of God was. Again, at the superficial levels, the, there was probably a complex that had developed around the tabernacle with places to, to stay, and Eli had a doorway, and there's all sorts of stuff developed at Shiloh where the, the ark was. And Samuel was merely lying near the tent of, uh, of, the, of the ark. But also just the symbolism of Samuel being close to God. The closest he could be um, physically. He did not yet know God. But he was drawing close to God in the only way that he could. And in that situation we go into verse 4. Then the Lord called Samuel. It was at that point. And as I read that, I thought, what point are we at as a nation? What point are we at as a parish? What point are we at as our individual lives? Is there a then for us? Then God spoke. The rest of the story, as it was read, I think we probably know it quite well. Samuel hears and doesn't recognize the voice of God. He mistakes who's speaking. He, he misunderstands. And he goes to Eli. And I wonder how often we mistake the voice of God and don't, don't get it. We don't recognize when God speaks to us. But Eli finally works out what's going on and says to him, say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening, and Samuel does, and God speaks. And I wish that God had spoken to Samuel words of encouragement and comfort. Don't worry, Samuel, it's not that bad. I'm still around. Pat on the head. He has a word to, to give you strength and to keep you going. Don't, don't panic. It's all okay. I have it in hand. But God speaks to Samuel, and he says, See, I am about to do something that will make the ears of everyone tingle. I will carry out against Eli everything I spoke against his family. He speaks with words of judgment. And sometimes we, we, we probably don't hear God because we don't want him to say those kind of things. But when God speaks, he will always speak what is needed, not what we want. It's understandably the next morning, Samuel doesn't want to say anything. 
just goes about his business, pretends nothing happened, and Eli calls him, and he has to speak to Eli and tell him what God said. And Eli's response, um, I'm not sure if it's a response of resignation or a response of faith, where he says, he is the Lord. Let him do what is good in his eyes. And when God works, we know that he is the Lord and he will do what is good. We might not see it, we might not understand it, we might not get our heads around it, but he is the Lord and he will do what is good. And sometimes down the line we will see that it is good. And sometimes I believe it is only when we step into eternity and we see him face to face that everything will suddenly make sense to us. And as God speaks, the situation begins to change. We told the Lord was with Samuel as he grew up. And at the beginning, the word of the Lord was rare. And now we have, he let none of Samuel's words fall to the ground. There were not many visions, but now we're told everyone recognized that Samuel was attested as a prophet of God, and things began to change. And I believe as God acts, things will change, but not always as we expect. And in this instance, things began to change, but Eli was still the high priest, his sons were still um, working as priests and carrying on their, their evil ways. Eventually, uh, Eli and his sons died. The Ark of God was captured. And we're told that it was taken to a, a town called Kiriath German, and it was there for 20 years before Samuel rallied the people of Israel and the new chapter began with the king. It wasn't three weeks after Samuel had heard the voice took time. There's a period of transition. And sometimes we're in much more of a hurry than God is, and we have to step back and say, He is the Lord. He will do what is good. Also, as God does things, there's a challenge to us. We see that in the Gospels. The people had taken the, the, the law of God, looked at it, worked out a system to try and keep it, Put it in place. This is what you should do. This is what you shouldn't do. They made it so that it worked. It was adequate. It served a purpose. And then Jesus comes along and starts challenging the good order that they had established. He starts saying things that challenge what they say. He starts doing things that they think ought not to be done on the Sabbath. And he comes and he challenges them and says, have you never read what God did? In the days of David. And when new things begin to happen, it is always a challenge to us. When God does new things, he very often stops the old things in order to start something new. And sometimes we have to give up in order to receive. We have to be prepared to pack up and move when God does new things. And God does new things through weak people. It's not only the strong and the, the steadfast and the, the magnificent. Uh, Paul writes to the uh, Corinthians and he says to them, we have this treasure that God has given in jars of clay, jars that will last, clay is durable, but it is also fragile. And as he looks at how we carry it forward, he says that with this treasure within us, as we trust in God, we are hard pressed on every side. We don't escape being hard pressed, but we're not crushed, perplexed but not in despair. Persecuted, yes, but we're not abandoned. <clears throat> Struck down, but not destroyed. And so we never 
uh, God doesn't promise that we won't experience those uh, challenges and the negative things, but we will get through them. He will carry us through to serve his purposes. And today as a country, we face uncertainty. We need to continue praying, knowing that God can work and God can do what is right. As a church, as a parish, we recognize we're part of the country. It's not that the country is over there and we're away. We're part of this country. We're part of the system. We're part of what is happening. And we need to pray that God will continue to lead us and to do new things within the church. And in our individual lives, we pray to God, God, bring us new, new life. Work in new ways within us. Work through us. Help us, Jesus, to follow you, to know your blessing. Give us patience. Help us to hear your voice as Samuel did and walk in your ways. And as we hear God, things will grow and change. Hearts of Hope began with a note in the bulletin. And I'm quite sure that Debbie and JJ, back in those days, reading that note, didn't think they would, in 30 years' time, have put 250 people through a home into society. Reading that note, they didn't think there'd be 58 years of children that they're caring for. 52 on an ongoing basis. But they responded to what they saw and what God was saying in their hearts and God led them on to where they are. And God provided to get them to where they are. Let us hear God. Let us walk with God. Let us let God work in us and change us. Amen. <clears throat> Clear the way for us. You know that as your children we 
fit and work together as one church, held together with the glue of love. We're instructed to love each other. In so doing, we can use the gifts you have so graciously given each one of us for the benefit of the others. Today, we especially thank you for your beautiful child, Lavia Sophia, who will be baptized into your church today, and who has brought her parents, Wesley and Kayleen, as well as her grandparents, Krish and Diane, Raymond and Lalita, with her brother Israel, to recommit themselves to you and to show us what family love is as you intend it to be. We also pray that we will reflect your glory in all that we do and to all those who you send across our paths. We thank you that Ian, filled with the Holy Spirit, opened your scriptures to us today. We thank you for the gift of his rectorship and that you've blessed us with your priests in Jerry and Jeanette, Claudia and Cabella, and that they are filled with the Holy Spirit as they guide and teach us your ways. We pray that you will bless their families who share them with us. Lord, love and bless Archbishop Tabo and Bishop Steve as they seek to lead and guide us in your ways and to your glory. We also pray for Tabo and Steve's families, that they may be blessed as they share their fathers with us. We lift to you for guidance, love, and the filling of your Holy Spirit, each member of our church council, so that they can guide and lead us in love, wisdom, and in your way. Help every person here today to use those gifts you've given them, so as to love one another, and to show the rest of your community that we love one another and so reflect you and your glory. Father, we lift to you in compassion all those who are unwell or grieving. There are many whose names are in the pew leaflet and on the prayer warriors and the WhatsApp group and also those who are prayed for by your children as intercessors. For your glory and our wonder, please heal those where it is your will to heal guide us to comfort those who grieve in their season of difficulty. We pray all these things because we know, love, and are lifted in the joy of Jesus, your Son, your sacrifice, so that we can kneel before you, our Father, and the Lord God Almighty. Amen. Ask the family to come forward. Baby in a vein. Bring your grandparents as well. They need to be here. We continue with the, the baptism service. You will have some responses on the screen. Please join in. Our Lord Jesus Christ gave himself to death on the cross and was raised again for the salvation of humankind. Baptism is the sacrament in which, by repentance and faith, we enter into Christ's salvation. We are united with Christ in his death. We are granted the forgiveness of sins. We are made members of his body. And we are raised with him to new life in the spirit. Children who are too young to profess the Christian faith themselves are baptized on the understanding that they will be brought up as Christians within the family of the church. As they grow up, 
They need the support of that family so that they may learn to live by trust in God. They need encouragement to be faithful in public worship and personal prayer. To come to confirmation and to continue in obedience to the commandments of God all the days of their life. This child whom you have brought for baptism depends on you for the help she needs. Will you help and encourage your child by your prayers, by your example, and by your teaching? Come, parents and godparents. Well, there we go. Parents and godparents, you who present this child for baptism must promise to bring them up to reject all that is evil. You are to answer for yourselves and for your child. Do you renounce the devil and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy what God has created? I renounce them. Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you away from the love of God? I renounce them. Dear friends, let us pray for this child. God of all mercy, look upon her. Amen. Amen. Put to death her sinful desires. Amen. Grant her the life of your spirit. Amen. Enable her to overcome the evil one. Amen. Amen. Give her every Christian virtue. Amen. Amen. Bring her with your saints to everlasting glory. Amen. Neve, may God Almighty deliver you from the powers of darkness and lead you into the light and obedience of Christ. Amen. Amen. Praise God who made heaven and earth. Who keeps his promise forever. Almighty God, whose Son Jesus Christ was baptized in the River Jordan, we thank you for the gift of water to cleanse and revive us. We thank you that through the waters of the Red Sea you led your people out of slavery to freedom in the promised land. We thank you that through the deep waters of death you brought your son and raised him to life in triumph. Bless this water, that your servant who is washed in it may be made one with Christ in his death and in his resurrection, to be cleansed and delivered from all sin. Send your Holy Spirit upon her to bring her to new birth in the family of your church and raise her with Christ to full and eternal life. For all might, majesty, authority, and power are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Parents and godparents, you must now, in allegiance to Christ, declare before God and the Church the Christian faith into which your child is to be baptized and in which you will help her to live and grow. You are to answer for yourselves and for your child. Do you believe and trust in God the Father who made the world? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in his son Jesus Christ who redeemed humankind? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in his Holy Spirit who gives life to the people of God? I believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Parents and godparents, will you by your own example and teaching bring up your child to live in obedience to God's laws as a loyal member of his church? I'll tell. I will. Wonderful. Bring them there.
I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And I sign you for the cross, the sign of Christ. <laughs> Do not be ashamed to confess the faith of Christ crucified. Find the light in the banner of Christ against sin, the world, and the devil, and continue his faithful soldier and servant to the end of your life. Now I give you a candle as a symbol of the light of Christ. <laughs> By baptism into Christ, you pass from darkness to light. Shine as the light in the world to the glory of God the Father. And we have a Bible. You can give to them. Take this book. In it, in it is the good news of God's love. Read it. For it tells how you can share in the eternal life which God extends to all who repent and put their faith in Christ. And God has received you by baptism into his church. We welcome you into the Lord's family. We are members together of the body of Christ. We are children of the same Heavenly Father. We are inheritors together of the kingdom of God. We welcome you. And I ask her, God Mother Benita, to pray for her and the family. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day and the gift of Navay, our goddaughter. We pray for Navay and ask that she grows up to become a person who knows you, walks in your ways, and lives in obedience towards you. May she know your son Jesus and surrender her life to him, living a repentant and holy life empowered by the Holy Spirit. May you use Navay as an instrument for your kingdom and as a channel of blessings to others. Father, your word says you should train up a child in the way that he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. Just as Joseph and Mary presented Jesus to you, Wesley and Colleen want to follow that same example by presenting the way to you. We pray that you give them the patience, love, guidance, strength, knowledge and wisdom to raise both Israel and the way, Lord. We thank you for the privilege of being able to walk this journey with Wesley and Colleen and we pray that we continuously seek your word to be able to support them and be there for them. And we pray this in your most precious name. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Let us pray for the families. <coughs> Heavenly Father, we pray for these families. Give them the spirit of wisdom and love that their homes may reflect the joy of your eternal kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we pray for ourselves as baptized members of the church. Almighty God, we thank you for our fellowship in the household of faith with all those who have been baptized in your name. Keep us faithful to our baptism and make us ready for that day when the whole creation shall be made perfect in your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We're going to ask you to stand and welcome Neve to the family in song. <laughs>
so while the family is standing here with us, let us share the peace. We are the body of Christ. By one spirit, we were baptized into one body. Keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. We are bound by the love of Christ. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. given us all that we have and enjoy. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. With this bread that we bring, we shall remember Jesus. With this wine that we bring, we shall remember Jesus. Bread for his body, wine for his blood, gifts from God to this table we bring. We shall remember Jesus. The Lord is here. 
His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love, you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You have blessed us as your children, and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross, and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night that he was betrayed at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine <clears throat> may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Amen. Please be seated or kneel. So we pray together the prayer that Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. <coughs> Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. And as we come to the invitation, and particularly for our guests amongst us, there will be two communion stations, one where I'm pointing to my left, and another one over there to my right, and the ushers will invite you up. Don't worry, it's not a test to see if you stand up at the right time. <laughs> there are also, when you come for wine, there is also juice. So would you just indicate if you would prefer to have juice, that that is what you would like. <coughs> 
draw near and receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Feed on him in your hearts, by faith, with thanksgiving.
Give thanks to the Lord, for he is gracious. His mercy endures forever. And so as we go out, committed to be God's people in God's place, we pray. God of power, may the boldness of your spirit transform us. May the gentleness of your spirit lead us. May the gifts of your spirit equip us to serve and worship you now and always. Amen. Especially at this time, as Ian has shared, where we are in the country, do you need to play for, pray for Africa, especially our country. <laughs> Drive carefully. Um, also, after the service, uh, Hearts of Hope will be around. They have coffee which they sell to raise funds. So if you drink coffee, come and buy some. If you don't drink coffee, you do know somebody else that does. <laughs> you can buy some for them. Um, and if you haven't got cash, they do take a card. And if you think, oh, I need something, um, we can put orders through the office in the, the week ahead as well. But there is coffee, and it goes just, it's not only a good coffee, but it goes to support a good cause as well. So, you use that. A reminder, keep your labels on after uh, uh, the service over tea. We'll have the box to collect the labels uh, at the tea stations. And if you have a, a, a temporary handwritten label, uh, just, we'll have a piece of paper there, stick it on there, that way you don't go to the shops and model that everyone has your name on So, we'll just do that. And then, we have a quiet morning this coming Saturday, the 8th, between 7.30 and 10.30. Um, it is a wonderful opportunity to, to stop, step aside and just focus on God. Sue leads us in a time of of meditation, but the bulk of the morning, of, and it's not that long, it's um, a very short three hours, the bulk of the time is for you to sit and think and pray and engage with God in whatever way so, um, works best for you. So if you have the morning clear, do join us, maybe think of clearing the morning to join us, um, it is well worth it. And if you are able to come, just let the office know so that we know how many cups of coffee to make and how many muffins to buy. Thank you.
stand for God's blessing. The spirit of truth lead you into all truth, give you grace to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, and strengthen you to proclaim the word and works of the Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit be, in, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. In Samuel we read that King David in his peculiar <coughs> garments, very smart looking, he danced before the Lord. I think none of us are kings and we're not here in the kingly garments, but we can still dance before the Lord. Sing the hum of your tina. to come and bring whatever you need prayed for, anything, to those who are on duty to pray today who are on that side, if you're watching right here, that's the supper room. And as Ian said, there is coffee being sold by Hearts of Hope outside, and beyond that there is also coffee to be drunk. <laughs> Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.